Hey guys, Viper Mike here. So, uh, for a buddy of mine, brought by his uh, Gen 4 2009 coupe, and uh, just wanted to make a quick video just to do a quick comparison between the two cars, to just kind of give you guys some insight as to the differences between the years uh, with the Vipers, and just to kind of see the difference also of my modified car and his car, which is pretty much stock. Um, the reason why he brought it by, he actually picked up a set of coilovers that, uh, like aftermarket co coilovers that he'd like me to install. So um, I'll also do a video on uh, on that. But for now, let's do a quick walk around uh, of his car. His car is almost completely bone stock, and like I say, and uh, it's in really good shape. So it'll kind of show you guys what a what a pretty mint uh, Gen 4 Viper looks like. So let's get started. So right off the bat here, I mean, obviously my car is a convertible. It's a Gen 3 convertible. Um, you could get a coupe in a Gen 3, but that started in uh, 2006. It was the only year you could get a Gen 3 coupe. And then when the Gen 4 came out in 2008, you could get them in a coupe or convertible form. Um, so the front is pretty much the same. Uh, the original Gen 3 hood was obviously different. This is the factory Gen 4 hood, and his car has the factory uh, black stripes on it. Um, I believe this is one of three cars in this uh, gray color with the black stripes from the factory, so it's a pretty rare car. So having a quick look at the hood here, you can see the factory vents, uh, those plastic inserts, which are really hard to get now. I don't think they make them anymore, so if you break one, you're kind of screwed. And this is my aftermarket uh, Gen 4 style carbon fiber hood that, uh, that I had painted to kind of match the car. And it doesn't really match, so I'm going to have to get it repainted. And mine had just aftermarket uh, metal mesh in there, which I removed because it, kind of, it looked pretty, pretty cheap. So I opted just to uh, leave them open, which uh, he might do as well on his car because those plastic, black plastic inserts, they just come out. So walking around, um, pretty much the only thing that's been modified on this car is the wheels have been powder coated black. Um, he put some new exhaust tips on it because the old ones were, uh, were rusting. Uh, powder coated the filler cap black. And um, that's about it. So looking at the back, you can see obviously the coupe rear end and the convertible rear end are completely different. Um, the taillights are different. Um, the coupes, actually those are Gen 2 taillights. They're the same lights they've been using since the 90s. Uh, whereas the, the convertible uses the newer style Gen 3 taillights. Um, and then obviously you have the different trunk lid and the, obviously a fixed roof. The coupes are really beautiful cars. Um, I was actually considering converting mine into a coupe. I came across a bunch of coupe parts um, that I don't know, they may, might still be available. I may still do it down the road because I think I like a coupe better than a convertible. Um, and with how modified my car is, I don't know if it'd be worthwhile changing it or just get a coupe and modify it. But nevertheless, this is the back, the view from the back. Um, the rear, dif the bumper is a little different. Obviously, you can see the uh, diffuser is a little different. It's pretty dark, kind of hard to see. Um, versus on the on the convertible, slightly different design there. Um, having a look inside. Inside is completely stock. It's got the, the Viper side soles there. Um, factory seats, factory shifter, factory radio. Um, all the bezels are factory. And uh, in, all in really nice shape. Now comparing that to my car. My car has an aftermarket uh, center console in it. So it's got a short shifter with a, with a newer style Viper knob. I believe he bought one like that too, just hasn't installed it yet. Um, 
my car also has those Viper side sills. And otherwise, well, and also my car has the aftermarket radio and also the aftermarket uh, GL sound system. And in the middle there, I've got an aftermarket subwoofer, whereas his is all uh, his is all original. So let's pop the hoods on these cars, and uh, we'll have a quick look under the hood. All right. So having a look, I've got both hoods open on both cars. So this is the 8.4 liter in the Gen 4, 600 horsepower in these, I believe. Um, main difference between these motors and the newer Gen 5s, I think, are the intakes and the heads. I think if, uh, if a lot of people swap the, the heads to the Gen 5 heads and they put the, the composite Gen 5 intake on, this intake is uh, aluminum. You can see a little bit of paint flaking off of it. So uh, he might actually uh, put a Gen 5 intake on, but maybe who knows. And uh, uh, but it's the I think it's the heads that make the biggest difference to kind of gain that extra 40 horsepower between that's the difference between the Gen Gen 4 and the Gen 5 motor. Uh, but that's all stock. You see the factory airbox there, and uh, factory valve covers. These the the coils are on uh, under here under the valve covers, um, whereas on the Gen 3s the coils are under the actual intake. So compare that to my car my car is obviously a gen 3 uh, twin turbo um, and you can see the spark plug wires they run around the back of the motor and under the intake and then it's hard to see in there but that's where the coils hide you've got two coils under there and that's what powers your spark plugs so my car right now it's at about 800 horsepower or so it puts down I believe about 720 at the wheels um, that's only at about six or seven psi of boost um, and I think this winter I'll probably be pulling the motor out and uh, getting a forged bottom end because right now the bottom end is stock so it's I'm pretty much limited by that if I go any higher I'll probably start breaking stuff so I don't really want to damage this motor because they're not easy to come by Especially the uh, the 2005 2006 blocks are kind of the ones that uh, the ones you want if you're modifying them so Those are not easy to find um, Also having a quick look at the front end here. I've got the aftermarket LED fog lights Which uh, he also bought that I'll install for him. I'll do a quick video on how to put those in and So you can see his factory ones right now and also, just comparing the right height for now, that's the height of my car. My car's got adjustable coilovers on it, and his is on the factory springs and shocks. So, we'll try to uh, get that right height down a bit, especially on the back end. These sit really high, so. It's actually quite a big difference when you compare the two side by side of uh, how high they sit from the factory. Well, relatively high. I mean, when you compare it to a, a truck, it's obviously still pretty low. But yeah, so I'm gonna get this thing in the garage. I'll probably take it for a quick drive here just to uh, get a feel for the stock suspension. I haven't driven one with a stock suspension in a while. And then uh, we'll do a, a drive after the suspension's installed and just to compare how it feels how tight it handles um, and then see if we need to adjust the rebound on the shocks or if uh, we can leave it alone so thanks for watching guys um, next video we'll uh, start working on this beautiful gen 4 and if you guys have any questions or have any comments post them down below and uh like and subscribe and you'll see a lot more videos on these two cars thanks for watching have a good one all right so while we're sitting in a bit of traffic here 
make a quick video. This is the drive with the stock suspension on the 2009 Gen 4 Coupe. Just taking a taking it out for a spin just to get a feel for the the way the suspension feels, and also just to kind of remind myself of what a stock Viper feels like. Um, going over bumps, you hear a bit of crashing in the back. I haven't looked at these shocks. I don't know if these shocks are leaking or if that's the way they are from the factory, but it's definitely not not smooth going over bumps. Uh, you go over a pothole and uh, you can definitely feel it. And it seems to be worse at the back than it is at the front. Um, otherwise, it's, it's pretty tight. Uh, it's kind of bouncy, um, which I'm a bit surprised by it being a stock suspension car. I didn't think it would be this bouncy from the factory, but it is. Um, everything else feels fine. The stock shifter is pretty long. It shifts nice and smooth, it's nice and tight, but the, uh, the short shifter feels a lot better and the shifts are a lot quicker. Uh, Power-wise, you can pretty much step on it and go um, second gear no wheel spin it's uh, it picks up and goes pretty good and I mean for 600 horsepower this thing uh, puts the power down pretty well he's got nice new uh, Michelin tires on it so it's uh, they, they seem to handle the power just fine so as soon as we get out of this traffic um, we'll get get it back to my garage and uh, probably tomorrow We'll start to uh, put it up on jack stands, pull the wheels off, and start pulling the, the suspension out.